Now, solving right triangles is going to require a combination of trig and the Pythagorean theorem. So I've got a spot right there at the top of the page for us to fill those in uh, so that we can reference them. Of course, the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I think everybody knows that at this point, but you can never hurt to write it down again, right? All right, trig ratios. I always abbreviate, okay? So for opposite, I put OPP over HYP for hypotenuse. Cosine adjacent ADJ over hypotenuse. And tangent opposite over adjacent. The first scenario that we're going to look at is solving for a leg of a triangle. Now, we did some of that on Thursday, but on Thursday, we had two out of the three legs. If you look at these, we only have one out of the three, but we're given an angle measurement. So let's look at uh, how we're going to do this. I always identify what part of the triangle I have and what part of the triangle I'm looking for. So when I look at this first diagram on number one, I see that I've got nine and that nine is my hypotenuse. Uh, now, I didn't mention this the other day when we were labeling our triangles. I just thought about it this morning when I was working on it with first period. Um, but if you're struggling with labeling your triangles, the corner of this right angle points directly to the hypotenuse. Okay? The corner of the right angle that square that indicates the right angle points directly to the hypotenuse. Then I've got the angle 63 degrees. So remember we drew that little curve there and then the side that the curve touched that wasn't the hypotenuse was the adjacent. So that means that X is the opposite. So we're looking for the opposite. We know the hypotenuse. So which trig ratio should we use here? Which one involves the opposite and the hypotenuse? Sine. Okay. Sine. We don't have theta this time. So we have an angle. It's okay. I've got calculus kids that to this day still call it sin instead of sine. And they also say cos. Sine, cosine, and tangent. But it's, it's all good. I know what you're talking about. Okay? This time we have the angle. It's no longer theta or A or Z or whatever it was. We have the angle. So we put that there. It's equal to the opposite is X over the hypotenuse is 9. Now it's just a matter of solving for our variable. So how do we get X by itself? Multiply both sides by 9. Now, especially if you are in the habit of clearing out the memory of your calculator instead of just clearing the screen, you must check to make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. Okay, because if it's in radians, it is going to give you an answer that is not the right answer. Sometimes they're kind of similar, sometimes they are way far off. So make sure that you're in degree mode first. And then we're just going to type it in, 9 sine of 63 degrees. And that's going to give us that that side x is approximately 8.019. We don't have any units here, so we'll just leave it there as a decimal value. <clears throat> now, I always try and check myself just to make sure that that answer at least makes somewhat sense. Uh, x is a leg. So it should be less than the length of the hypotenuse, and it is. Um, it is uh, less than the length of the hypotenuse, so at least I know I didn't make that mistake. It's not necessarily going to be foolproof for you there, but it is one little check that you can make to catch some mistakes. All right, so when I look at example two, I don't have the hypotenuse, so I'm going to go straight to my angle right here. So that means x is my adjacent side. 4 is the opposite side, which trig ratio involves the opposite and the adjacent? Tangent. That's all good. Tangent of 49 degrees is equal to the opposite. This time the number is on top. The adjacent is x. That's going to go on the bottom. So solving this one is two steps instead of one step. But the nice thing is the same thing happens every single time. Okay? You're trying to get x by itself, it's in the denominator. So we're going to start by multiplying by x. 
And then we're going to turn around and we're going to divide by the tangent of 49 degrees. Okay? <clears throat> so what happens is essentially the trig and the variable switch places. But that's only when the variable's on the bottom. Okay, so I kind of just did that in two steps in one here. Okay, multiply by the x, turn around and divide by the tangent of 49. Then I'm going to type that into my calculator and get my approximation for that side. 4 divided by the tangent of 49 degrees. X is approximately 3.477. Just thinking through this a little bit in my head, um, this is close to an isosceles triangle. If that's 49 degrees right there, then the other angle is like, what, 41? So they're pretty close to each other. So those side measures should be pretty close to each other. The number I get should be pretty close to four, and it is. Okay, that's just a little making sure that the answer makes sense kind of uh, thing in my head. Okay? All right, let's look at 3 and 4. Let's look at 3 and 4. 7 is our hypotenuse. To me, the hypotenuse is always pretty easy to pick out. And then I go from there. 38 degrees is the angle that we're given. That touches the side X, so that means side X is our adjacent. Which trig ratio? Adjacent hypotenuse? Cosine. Cosine of 38 degrees is the adjacent X over the hypotenuse 7. This is just like example number 1. Multiply both sides by 7. And that will give us the missing side. 7 cosine of 38. So our missing side is approximately 5.516. And it does check out that's a leg. It's less than the hypotenuse at 7. Okay. Last example here. 9 is the hypotenuse. 56 is touching the side X. So we have another cosine. Cosine of 56 degrees is equal to the adjacent X over the hypotenuse 9. Multiply both sides by 9. 9 cosine of 56 is going to give us our missing side at approximately 5.033. That's all there is to this part of it. We're going to look. So these scenarios, when we look at them, we're like, oh, great. We got two legs. I just have to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third leg. But that's not the question. The question here is, what's the measure of this angle with the question mark? So we still need to label our sides because we still need to find the appropriate trig ratio. <clears throat> Excuse me. So based on the way this is set up, and I like these already kind of have the curve in them. Um, but we don't even need that necessarily for this problem. 38 is our hypotenuse. 16 is our opposite because it does not touch the angle in question. So opposite and hypotenuse means sine. Okay, I'm going to use a theta instead of a question mark because I don't want a question mark in the middle of my math problem. Um, sine of theta is equal to the opposite, in this case is 16, over the hypotenuse is 38. Now, here's the thing. Trig ratios mean nothing without their angle. So to solve this, we don't divide by sine. What we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite, which the opposite is the inverse. Sine inverse of 16 over 38. It's on your calculator. Okay? It's just second sine, and then you put the ratio. Okay, So second sine, and then you put in the 16 over 38. So our angle here, theta, or the question mark, is approximately 24.9 degrees. Make sure you put that degree symbol on there. Okay. And typically these pictures are drawn somewhat to scale. 
Uh, so looking at that, it should make sense that the angle in question is smaller. It's the smaller of those two angles. So being 25, it's less than 45 degrees. That's probably good. Okay. All right, number six. 15 is, of course, the hypotenuse. 13 would be the adjacent. So which trig ratio? Cosine. Cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent 13 over the hypotenuse 15. So theta is equal to the inverse cosine. I know it looks like an exponent of negative 1, but we've talked about inverse notation. That's inverse cosine. Uh, sometimes, probably not in this class, but in the future, you may see that as arc cosine. Just so you know. Okay, so theta here is approximately 29.9 degrees. So I'll start rounding to meters 10 since that's what the worksheet says. Okay, number seven. Now, if we're given all three legs, we have a little bit of a choice of what we want to use. It's up to you. So since we've already done sine and cosine, Let's do one with tangent, since we have a choice here. Okay, so let's see here. 27 would be the adjacent, 36 would be the opposite, because 45 is the hypotenuse. So I'm making the choice to use tangent. Technically, I could use any of the trick ratios here, because I have all three sides. So if I choose tangent, I need the opposite, 36, over the adjacent 27 and then do the inverse tangent of 36 over 27 second tangent 36 over 27 so my angle is approximately 53.1 degrees and looking at this triangle that should make sense that it's bigger than 45 degrees because the side opposite is 36. It's bigger than the adjacent side. Um, so that angle should be greater than 45 degrees. Because, I don't know if you've ever been explained this before, um, the smallest angle is across from the smallest side. That's why the hypotenuse is always the biggest uh, leg or the biggest side in a right triangle because 90 degrees is always going to be the biggest angle in a right triangle. Um, the other two are going to be split between the other 90 degrees. That's why I was referencing 45 degrees because uh, 45 would be half and half. So since the angle in question is across from the bigger of the two legs, it should be an angle bigger than 45 degrees. Okay, let's do one more. Uh, number eight. Let's see here. 65 is the hypotenuse, 33 is the adjacent, 56 is the opposite. Which one you want to use? Cosine? Okie dokie. Let's do cosine. Cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, I really should have gotten each group to do a different one to prove that it doesn't matter which one you use. We can still do that. Okay, inverse cosine of 33 over 65 is approximately 59.5 degrees. So let's check that. If you are in an even numbered group, I want you to use sine to find that angle that we just found in number eight. If you're an odd numbered group, I want you to use tangent to find that angle. Should be the same. 